the interference of waves. So here are our goals for this session. First, we'll talk about interference for waves, both constructive interference and destructive interference. And then we'll talk about beats, and that is one application of interference. So first thing we need to talk about is what happens when you add waves. This is called the principle of superposition. So in the picture, you see wave one, wave two, and they combine on, say, a string into wave one plus wave two. And you simply have to add them together. You take the displacement from one wave at a particular point and combine it with the displacement from the other wave at that point. That gives you the net displacement of the medium at that point. And you do that point by point. That's the principle of superposition. Okay, so the net displacement of any point is the sum of the displacements due to each individual wave. So what about constructive interference? Well, the picture indicates that. We've got two approaching pulses. When they overlap, the size of the resultant is bigger than what either one of those two things were. In fact, it's simply the sum of those two things. And then afterwards, the pulses move apart as if they never met. That's kind of interesting. So we call it just constructive interference when the displacements of the individual waves go in the same direction. And the result is a large amplitude there. So that's constructive interference. And that really is a neat feature that after passing through one another, they just travel along as if they had never met at all. OK, so we can see this with a video. So the magic hand hits the play button, and there it is in action, constructive interference as opposed to destructive interference. So in this picture, you have uh, kind of two pulses that are approaching each other. They're mirror images. And at one instant in time, the string goes completely flat because they absolutely cancel each other out. And then almost by magic, the pulses reemerge from that string and the pulses move apart. Again, it's like they never met. They just carry on as if they hadn't met one another. OK, so when the displacements of individual waves or pulses are in opposite directions, then the waves cancel, at least partly. And this is what we call destructive interference. So how is it possible for the two pulses to reemerge from the flat string? Right? You would think, how could that possibly be true? Where is the, where's the energy to do that? OK, so think about that question as you watch the animation. So in this case, we do the destructive interference. You get these two pulses. So that was the case of different pulses. And now we'll do the case where the pulses are identical. Really watch that string. OK, what you can see is there's an instant where the string is flat, but there's lots of kinetic energy there. So different parts of the string are moving at that point. And so the energy to reconstitute those pulses comes from the kinetic energy of different parts of the string. OK, so let's carry on and talk about beats. Now, if you listen to two sound waves of similar frequency, you actually hear beats. And guitar players can use this to you know, tune their guitar or things like that. The intensity of the sound rises and falls. If the waves are exactly in phase with one another, one peak lines up with the peak of another wave, you get constructive interference producing a loud sound. And if the frequencies are just a little bit off from one another, then gradually the waves will drift out of phase and then finally destructive interference will take place and you hear nothing and the phase difference continues to grow until basically you get back to a full wavelength and then you get back to constructive interference again. Okay, so you can see this cycle where the resultant changes from having a large amplitude because of constructive interference to basically no amplitude at all because of destructive interference. 
And what you hear when you listen to that is that rise and fall in the amplitude. Okay, so we'll look at another perspective of that. So here these waves are uh, really quite similar in frequency. Uh, in the very middle of the picture, a peak in one wave lines up with a trough in the other one, so they cancel out. And then toward the left and the right, peaks are lining up with peaks, and so you get a large amplitude wave as a result. So what you hear is basically the, the frequency of the waves themselves, but then you hear this rising and falling at the beat frequency. And the beat frequency happens to be equal to the difference in frequency between the two waves. Okay, so for instance, if one happened to be uh, 400 hertz and the other one was 405 hertz, then you would basically hear a sound which sounded like a 402 and a half hertz uh, sound, but it would rise and fall at the rate of 5 hertz. You'd hear 5 cycles per second, kind of a wah, 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 wah kind of noise. That's what you listen to when you're listening to beats. Okay, so that's our introduction to the interference of waves and specifically uh, beats as an example of that.